Well, first, I would like to say thank you to everyone, everybody who's here. Um, I really appreciate from you, John, this, um, this conference. So also, I want to thank you for being here. And My pleasure. Thank you very much. So uh, I'm going to explain a little bit how we're going to work this conference for everybody. Um, John Banting will present for around 30 minutes. And then after that, you can have questions. You can have a small talk with him. Any question or anything you would like to share with us or ask John, um, that would be great. Okay. Then at the chat room, um, are you ready? Place there the, the link where you can register yourself, please. So thank you very much. Well, let me introduce John Bunting. Um, wait, wait, wait. Well, first, I would like to say that he's my favorite teacher. <laughs> that um, because of him, I'm in this area. That's why I love evaluation, right? Because I love him because he's my favorite teacher. And well, I really liked evaluation because I learned a lot from him. John Bunting is principal senior lecturer and director of the intensive English program at Georgia State University since 2001. His areas of interest include teacher training, corpus linguistics, and the use of technology in, sec in second language teaching and learning. His most recent books are Grammar and Beyond Essentials 4 and Grammar and Beyond 4, second edition, 2021. Mm -hmm. uh, both are published by Cambridge University Press. John has extensively online teacher training for EFL teachers in Mexico collaborating with an amazing group of teachers and teacher trainers for the National Pedagogical University in Mexico City. Upene. Right? Upene. Upene. Ah, Upene, good. <laughs> most recent projects include creating a massive open online course mock, right? On English con communication for health professionals for healthcare works across Africa conducting teacher training workshops in Qatar, right? Qatar, is it Qatar? Okay. Qatar, yeah. And developing uh, a legal English center in Turkey. He has given workshops and presentations on vocabulary, technology, and specialized language instruction in the US and different countries, and in different countries around the world. In Atlanta, he has developed community-based program to reach immigrants, regardless of immigration status. So as you can see, he's an expert in evaluation. He's um, a great teacher for me. So we, I think we're going to learn a lot from him. Hope you can enjoy this presentation, this conference, and thank you very much, John. <laughs> thank you, Isela. Dr. Isela, thank you so much. And it's a pleasure to be here with all of you. Um, I know it's it's late in the day. We we do so many online things. You may be zoomed out here, um, but it, I'm very very happy that I'm here with you guys. Uh, I want to make sure you can see my 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 screen with the big old panther. Yes. I Great. Can. Okay. Um, so what I want to do is I'm going to talk to you a little bit about some of the things that we've been doing. You guys may not know this, but there's a pandemic going on. Are you aware of this? <laughs> well, we're dealing with it here all, and as in all over the world. Um, and one, one of the things that we have decided to do, and you may have done something similar, we made a real rapid move to online training, online uh, language training. Uh, we, we moved over in March. And then at the end of the spring semester, we decided in our program to continue just online. And then in the 
the beginning of our fall semester, which was late August, we decided that for to protect the health of our teachers and our students, we were going to stay primarily online. We actually allow some students to go for one hour of face-to-face -face instruction per week for oral communication, but everything else we're doing online. And when uh, Isela was mentioning to me that um, you, you know we were going to talk about evaluation, it's such a, a challenging topic anyway, but I think in this online environment, it can be a real challenge. So I, what I want to do is just talk to you about some of the ideas that we've been looking at. And I also want to hear from you guys too. So um, first of all, let me ask, are, are, are people here, are you students? Are you teachers? What's going on? Who, who are you? And you, if you want, you can just pop in the chat room. Just tell me who you are. You can give me your name. I, I don't know. Are you all from Mexicali or 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 Tecate? I love that area, um, and Tijuana and Ensenada. All that area is so beautiful. Okay, so we've got uh, teachers, students. Teachers, students. Oh, great, great. And those of you who are students, are you studying to become teachers or are you studying something different? Yes, actually, the teacher is a it's my teacher. Pardon? Yes, I'm, I'm, I'm starting to become a teacher. Okay. Oh, wonderful. Oh, I love that. Yes, teachers, we're a good group. Um, okay, great. So, that's what I thought, and I, I'm happy to hear that. And are you all at UABC, or everyone's in, in the program there? OK, great. Wonderful. So let me see if I can get my little thing to, to move here. So as uh, my lovely presenter uh, mentioned, my name is John Bunting. I'm from Georgia State University. Uh, this The first thing I want to do is I want to tell you a little bit about the university. And then I want to talk to you about some of the challenges that we've been facing with assessment and evaluation in an online environment. And I'll mention this again, but I'm going to mention it now too. One of the most important things to do for evaluation and for life in 2020 is breathe. Because this is stressful. It's stressful for students. It's stressful for teachers. And it's stressful as we try to, you know, we want to try and put things into the same boxes that we had when we were living in the non-pandemic time. Uh, and for most of us, not very much of an online time either. Um, and it's, it can be a real challenge because sometimes things are not going to work the same. And just so you know, that young man who's in the picture there, who's doing a little bit of online work right there, um, is a dear friend who graduated from our program and he is also a teacher of English. Duncan, he is from uh, uh, Kenya. He's from Kenya and he's done incredible work. All right, so Georgia State University is where I am located uh, in the city of Atlanta. I'm very proud of this university. As you can see, my background, it's all Georgia State. Um, it's a wonderful research university. Uh, we have over 100 fields of study and over 250 degree programs. Um, and it has the, the environment, we're in downtown Atlanta. Uh, there's, I'm actually, there's a picture of me with another one of our wonderful students. And that little arrow in our photograph is pointing to my office in that tall building. So that's where I get to go. Although lately I've been staying at home a lot, um, but it's an incredible uh, uh, place, the university, as well as the city of Atlanta. Um, it's Georgia State is one of the most diverse universities in the United States, and it was ranked number three as most innovative in the US. Um, and we're huge. We've got all, over 50,000 students. And we also have a very, very strong teaching. Uh, so it's, it's, it's a wonderful place. Uh, and 
We also have applied linguistics programs. So when you guys finish with your degrees and you say, well, I want to go on and continue, come see us. Come get your master's or your PhD with us, okay? All right. Um, one of the other things about our universities, as I mentioned, it's diverse. The student population is diverse. We have a lot of immigrants. We actually have a lot of students who, whose uh, origins are Mexican, um, and as well as a lot of students from a lot of uh, underrepresented groups. And we have a very diverse set of uh, colleges within the university. We have nursing, policy studies, law, uh, arts, filmmaking is a very big thing here in Atlanta. Uh, they call it the new Hollywood. And so we, we've been doing a lot of that uh, and a, a really good business school, public health school. And the program that I am director of, as uh, Isela was mentioning, is the intensive English program. And we have five levels and we, we separate out our classes by uh, skills. So we have uh, structure and composition, which includes a lot of grammar and a lot of process writing. We have oral communication, which includes, has more of a focus on pronunciation as well as just being able to communicate. We have oral fluency for our lower level students where they're just really practicing engaging people in the language, learning about culture. We have reading and listening, and we have extensive reading. That oral fluency class sort of uh, is replaced at the higher levels by an academic writing class. Um, and those are the things that we work on. We have, it's task-based and content-based uh, instruction. We developed our own curriculum and I'm very proud of it. Uh, because we're very uh, student-centered, and I'm sure that's something that you guys are all working on as well, uh, to try and engage students where they live and what, with things that really matter to them. So that's our program, and I'm proud of it, so I had to tell you. Um, and I want to talk to you a little bit now about the topic at hand, assessment and evaluation. And I'm going to talk. I'm going to talk to you about a few different topics. I'm going to go over placement uh, exams, formal uh, classroom ex uh, assessment, and informal assessment. And then I may talk a little bit about things under the radar. We'll see about that. So there are challenges, as you all probably know. Guys, can can you also do me a favor? Uh, in the chat room, just let me know. Are you guys going online? blended or face-to-face -face for your classes now? Okay, Cindy's saying online, Martha's online, Norma's online, Jessica's online. Oh, it looks, it looks like everybody's online. Well, I have to tell, first I wanna congratulate you because I think you're making the right public health choice. You know, it's hard for everybody but I think you're making the right choice for, for all of us, for our abuelos and our padres, for all of us, the tios and the tias, uh, and people like me, because as you can see, I'm not quite as, as young as you guys are. Um, so thank you. But you know, this online world has challenges. One of the things, as I mentioned earlier, is we have to acknowledge it's not the same as in-person classes. It's just not the same. I think you need to have more trust. We have to be able to trust our students because there is less of that control that as teachers, we, we are so used to, you know? I mean, like right now, if this were a class, I can see your heads, <laughs> but I don't know what else is going on, you know? <laughs> there could be a party going on back there. You know, um, you could have, you might have a movie that you could be watching, you know, so, and when we're in a classroom, we're as instructors, as teachers, we're able to control that a lot more. So we have to trust our students, you know, um, and, and that can be hard. Uh, what's interesting is that I think is also connected to assessment and evaluation. I also think we have to be more patient because as, um, uh oh, let me just see. Let me, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to call her out. It was 
Cecilia, I don't know if she was able to get back in, but Cecilia came in and she and her her audio was not working. She couldn't hear me. I couldn't hear her, you know? And so, you know, it's not her fault. It's not my fault. This is technology at work or at play. Uh, so we have to be more patient. And sometimes I think a lot of us come to the the area of assessment and evaluation with more of a very strict and, and very rigid uh, mindset. And I think moving online requires us to start to modify that a little bit. And we have to be more flexible. We have to realize that sometimes students are going through hard times. And they, we can look at them and we see them on the screen and they look just fine, but we don't know what's going on. I've had, and I, it breaks my heart because this semester I've had students who have had to deal with really, really difficult situations. Um, in our program, I, I think for our students, it's an even more challenging uh, environment because of the distances. You know, I have, I have students who are concerned about families who are very far away and they can't travel. You know, they can't go back and forth. Um, it's not like you're just down the street. Um, so we have to be very flexible and things happen. So I promised you I would get back to saying this once again. It's kind of like a meditation class. Take a deep breath. As a teacher, as someone who's going to give a test, it's all going to be okay. So, um, and I put up this, this uh, little visual because part of what requires the patience and the flexibility is our students and ourselves as instructors have this whole new world that we have to learn while we're still trying to do the things that we've signed on for. You know, I sign on for grammar, but I also have to learn all of these things about the audio, the video, the connections, all these different things. And the students are also doing that. And they're doing it in a second language. So it's, it's a real challenge for them. So I want to move over to the placement tests, because that's one of the things that we work on. Uh, you know, we, we give placement tests to identify where students have to be. Um, the way we do ours, and yours may, may be different, uh, we, we create our own tests. We don't buy tests because we're cheap. Uh, so we, we make our own. Um, and we have multiple choice sections. That's the MC stands for multiple choice. Uh, and we do those for listening, reading, vocabulary, and grammar. Now, in an earlier time period, before 2020, we would have everyone come into one big room. We could proctor them. We, see, you know, we sit people every other chair. We have them put away all their things, no cell phones, out, all of that, right? Um, but in this environment, we can't do that. So we're doing it kind of like what we are right now. I could say to you guys, okay, here, I want you to take this test. Well, oh, maybe I should have done that. I could have given you a test. Oh, that would have been fun. Um, no, I'm, I'm nicer than that. So, so when we're moving to the online environment, some of the things that we need to do is I think it's important instead of just using the one test that we know we can really keep an eye on that has the same items in the same places for students, which has its drawbacks even in in-person uh, testing, but it certainly has its convenience when it's time to run a scan, Scantron thing or you know, get the results. You have to, one of the options is to create item banks so that you make a series of equivalent items and you put them online into, a, into a, a group and then you have the program can automatically pull them out. You can also set up online uh, placement tests so that they randomize items and the order of the items. And they also can randomize the order of the answers. And one of the nice things about that is that it removes some of the temptation for students, or at least the effectiveness if they give in to temptation, to, to text their friend and say, okay, number one is C, number two is D. Because what the other person is getting at the exact same time is gonna be a completely different question with completely different answers. 
And even if they get the same question, the answers won't be in the same order. So it's, it doesn't completely eliminate this option for some academic dishonesty, but it makes it more challenging for them. And also what we do is uh, we have, in order to do these tests, they have students have to have their camera on and their audio on. And let me ask you guys another question. When you're in your classes, either as a teacher or as a student, and I see everyone's doing it online. Well, first of all, if you do like we're doing live sessions, do you make students or as a student, are you required to have your camera on? So you can just say camera on or camera off. Tell me. I like that you guys are very good at this. Oh, Cecilia's back as Cindy. That's good. Optional, optional. Oh, good. Okay. You have very nice teachers. Oh, wow. Everybody's optional. Well, oh. there are some exceptions, John. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there's the on. I saw Damaris has the on. Oh. Well, sometimes I ask them to turn on their camera, well, their cameras, if they're going to participate, right? Yeah. Uh -huh. well, and, you know, it's it's a nice thing, too. I, I like that, Isela, because some, you know, it can be also, we all have tough days. And believe me, in 2020, we have more tough days than usual. So there may be some times where for a student, they're, they, they can be there and listen, but they're they're just not up to participating. Um, so that's a very nice approach for that. Um, oh yeah, that teacher is Sela. She's Hi, she's it's a teacher. It's a teacher. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, so uh, one of the things is that you know you, when you're doing something like that kind of placement test, which is sort of a formal, structured thing, um, you want to try and come up with some strategies that will remove some of the issues that can uh, take away from the validity, the validity of what you're doing. Um, now I've, the, the little video, the little graphic that I popped up there, this is coming from uh, a, a learning management system. So you guys use a, some sort of a system, right? Like uh, uh, I, this one is from something called Canvas. I don't know what you guys use. How do you how do you share information with people in a class? Blackboard, okay. Okay, great. Classroom, Blackboard, all right. The one that I'm using here and the one I chose, we have a, a proprietary one, which is like Blackboard. It's called um, Desire to Learn, iCollege. That's all drives me crazy, but that's what they use for the university. But there's also Canvas has a wonderful free and really a really strong uh, free version of Canvas that uh, as teachers we can use and we can create things. And what's nice is you can actually share things, including things like quizzes. So um, those are uh, each one of those uh, men. This, this is called an LMS, a learning management system like Blackboard and Canvas, each one has their, their, their benefits. So once you figure out what works with those, then I, I suggest that you try to um, use them as best you can. This one, and something I didn't mention is you also can password protect things. What in this one is called the access code. So you can make it so that people can't go in. You can also have it, I, I set up the placement test so that people can go forward but they can never go back so once they've answered a question they can't go back and revisit it and as long as people know that in advance and we use that consistently i don't think that's a problem um, and that there's no multiple attempts now we also do essays in our placement test trying to find out where people are we want to find out about their writing uh, not just discrete items, but the actual sort of holistic view of how they write. So with the essays, oh, there he is, one of my good friends. Um, we randomize the topic similar to what we do with those item banks. 
the topics that we use, we randomize them so that even though people may be taking the test all at the same time, they don't all have the same topic. So that they're gonna have, we make them equivalent topics, but in terms of difficulty, but they're, they're not gonna be the same. And I like to say we go old school. We require, we require everyone to have a pen and a piece of paper. And so that, here's my paper. And so they, they've got to write their essay and then they take a picture of it and they send it to us. And you may say, why John, why? We've got all this great technology. Why? Hmm. One of the biggest issues that we encounter is something called copy and paste. And it is, it's a glorious tool that's revolutionized our lives. Isn't that true? It's so nice. But when we're trying to assess somebody's language proficiency, it's not really helpful. Now, for us, I mean, I, I will tell my students, I say there are gonna be times when Google Translate is a great tool to use. And there's no shame in using those things. But if you're trying to become a better user of the language up here, it's better to, to keep that to a minimum. And because it's so prevalent, one of the thoughts that we had is that if we have people actually physically write it and we, there's a time, a time limit, it's going to really require them, for the most part, to once they're given a topic, they're not aware of what it is, and they've got to write it and then take a picture of it all within a specific amount of time and they have the camera on and the audio on as they're writing. And I don't know if you're familiar with a concept called Big Brother. It's where people are watching you, you know? And so I feel like Big Brother during these because they're trying to do their work and I'm just sitting there staring at them. <laughs> Actually, I'm, I'm usually very nice. I'll, I'll, I'll shut off my video so that at least they don't see me looking at them. Uh, but I am watching them. Uh, and I think it's important to be able to do that. And then finally, we have the oral interviews where we want to assess their language, their speaking and listening skills. Um, and again, for the oral interviews, we do it with the camera on, with the audio on, and we record it so that more than one person can evaluate their uh, results. I should mention, we also do that for the essays as well. We have multiple raters, which is what we do old school anyway. Um, and there it is. We do a nice little oral interview. Um, and then in the classroom, we're going to look at just a couple of things, formal assessment and informal assessment. Now, as an instructor of many years, I like things that can be auto graded, where I don't have to grade them, but the, the students still get some benefit out of it and it, they can get feedback but it's not gonna take my time to do it. It takes a lot of time to set it up, but once it's set up, then students can use this and they use it. And I think this is very important when we look at assessment, especially in an online environment, because all of this time spent in front of a screen can get overwhelming for students, especially if they're doing a lot of this, as you guys know. Um, so one of the things to do with multiple choice quizzes is to make them low stakes so that students aren't freaking out about them. They're not anxiety ridden about this. There's plenty of anxiety in our world. We don't want these to be, to be one of those. So my advice is to make them low stakes. Don't make them huge amounts of points for what they're trying to do. Make them repeatable. Make it so that if they do it once and they wanna do it again, they can do it. Um, and that, because remember too, Assessment isn't just about evaluating what's going on. It's trying to integrate what you're doing there with the holistic view of the learning experience. We can make testing and assessment learning as well as just evaluating. And so every time, for example, I have students do academic language, academic vocabulary work. And every time that they encounter a word, that's adding something, maybe just a little, but it's adding something to them. Um, you wanna make them relevant. So one of the things that you can do is as you go through a class, for example, and you learn that you have people named Elisa, Frangeli, and Laura, 
then you can include those names in all of these dramas that are going on in whatever it is you're writing or you're having them listen to so that they, or Isela, we can also put her in there too. Um, so, you know, you can make it relevant to them and you can also use the content that they've given you. So if I find out that one of the students is a really good classical guitarist, I can add that to the content. And the other thing, and again, this is one of the things I like about Canvas. Um, and so I am gonna, uh, <laughs> I'm reading some of these comments. You guys are good. Um, uh, in Canvas, you and, and most of these uh, assessment tools, you can actually provide feedback on all of the items that are listed as um, answers. So there's the answer and then what we call the distractors. So you can, give, you can give encouragement when someone gets it right, but then for each one of, let's say you have four choices, one is right, the other three are wrong. You can also explain to them why it's wrong. Isela, are, are you trying to talk? You're muted. Isela? No, okay, okay. See, that's a classic online thing. <laughs> Yeah, the three most common words in my Zoom life. I can't hear you. Wait, I can't hear you. Four words, sorry. <laughs> All right, so also for, for the, the multiple choice, the automated part of formal assessment, create test banks and then shuffling, kind of like what we talked about for the placement test to keep it engaging so that if someone does go over, do it again and again, they're not doing the exact same things over and over again. They may get different questions and the answers are going to be moved around and it's going to require a little more cognitive work on their part. And all of that, I think, helps them uh, improve because that's really what we want to do. We want them to improve. And then for the essays, and this goes, this is true old school as well, but I think it's really important with online uh, teaching and learning is you want to make sure that the, the rubrics are clear and transparent. Um, and what can also be useful is instead of just having one big grade for the final project, you break it into as many of the important uh, components of the process that you can, so that there's less chance of somebody just pulling something off the internet or having somebody else write it. You know, if you're able to engage them in the steps like coming up with their thesis statement, uh, coming up with topic sentences, uh, using conditionals, um, and then as you, you can give them points as they go along. And then I don't know if you guys are doing any of this. I think there's great value to what I call timed writing, which is the, the experience of, which is somewhat common in some areas in the university, not every area, but it's where you are going to go in and you're going to have a certain amount of time to write about a certain topic, go. Um, and in those cases, it's similar to what we do with the placement test. I think it's good to have live sessions and you students have to keep their audio and video on. But because it's a private thing, for example, we could, I could put you all into using Zoom here. I can put each one of you into an individual breakout room where you're there alone with your thoughts and you start writing. You keep your audio and your video on, and then I, like Darth Vader, comes you know, zooming in and out of the different rooms, and I may talk to you, or I may just come in and you know, say, what's going on? Are you doing all right? Are you awake? Uh, and, then, and then move out. Um, and I think that those are useful, and also you wanna make sure that they have, you're, you're clear about the uses and not just, it's not just about being clear with students that they, what they can and cannot do in terms of academic honesty, but why it matters. And I think this is a really important issue for, because if students can buy in to the fact that if they're able to construct these things on their own, they are gonna be in such a better place than so many other folks. Whereas if it's just, I'm just gonna, grab something that I've some canned information and throw it there. That's, that's not to their benefit in terms of what they want to do. 
one of the things that I've, I've done, I actually do for any of these tests is the very first question is a statement that the students sign about academic honesty. And it's not that it's gonna stop someone if they're not gonna be honest or dishonest, but what it does do is it makes students think about that and that you know, part of what they're doing in any academic environment is they're saying, I'm going to do my work and nobody else's, you know? So I think it's useful for them. And it takes like two seconds. And there's one of my wonderful students working hard. And I was there taking a picture of him, poor guy. <laughs> and then for presentations as well, which is another way we can do formal assessments for uh, oral communication, Again, you want to have clear rubrics and you want to make recordings of what you've done. And then you can eva make evaluations of it using rubrics during the presentation and then after the presentation. If there's anything that's particularly high stakes, you can have other people also be involved in the, eva the evaluation of it. Oh, Cindy. Cindy, is it possible oh, that you... Cecilia, right? Uh, Cecilia? Is that Cecilia? I, I think there's a, a dog barking. <laughs> now, the other thing, I love Zoom. The other thing is. John Bunting, is it possible? Oh, that's it. Ready. Okay. Um, the other thing is to allow students more. Remember, we talked about flexibility. Imagine you've had something happen. You're, you're about to give a presentation in class. You're nervous. And for some reason, your computer, the screen goes blue. And it's like, and you you just have to shut it down. You've got to restart it. You're sweating. All of a sudden, you're in a panic. It's OK to let people have a do-over. For example, I mean, it's a little bit more complex with writing, but with, with presentations, a do-over, I think it's great. And I think the more you do it, remember, the more you do it, the more the, the student is gonna get better and better with what they do, you know? And, and so I think that's also something that is really useful. And it also, I think, helps students feel a little more confident and less stressed out. So, so when we're looking at this formal assessment, one of the changes is I think it's useful in an online environment to increase opportunities for assessment and lower the, the sort of total percentage for each item so that there's less stress. If I miss one day because my computer's not working or because my dog is barking, I'm okay. Um, as we've been talking about, we want to make it part of the learning process. It's not just a, a discrete item all by itself where you have to go in and sweat for four hours. Make it something where they're still learning while they're doing it. And figure out ways to reduce the anxiety for these poor students, because this is a brave new world for all of us. And students, some students especially, you know, we, we know there are people who are visual learners, auditory learners. You know, I think some people are just more adept at being able to do all of this online. Some people can can sort of visualize things easier in this environment and some people can't. There's also the whole issue of, you know, technological uh, haves and have nots. You know, if you have the resources to have a great internet and a great computer, I mean, I, I had somebody and I, I, I I'm so proud of her. She was really struggling and she would try to get to my class by driving here in, the, in Atlanta. They've started having this thing where at the public libraries, they give free Wi-Fi out in the parking lot of the library. So she would drive to a library and for as long as her laptop would keep running, she would be there with us because she didn't, she couldn't afford the internet. And I mean, we want to try and make it we don't want we don't want to shame people and we don't want to have people feel like just because they're not able to do that they they won't be able to learn because they still can learn and we can reduce the anxiety for them and i think it's good to try and focus less on the formal and more on the informal and that to me is kind of a paradigm shift or a big shift that we can make for 
moving online because we're so focused or we're so accustomed to having big formal assessment tools. And maybe we can start making a little bit of a shift. And of course, encouraging academic honesty is always a good idea. So now I'm gonna talk just briefly about informal assessment. Uh, when there's group work, when you have people and you have people doing something in a group, you can use the breakout rooms. And here we have my little set of breakout rooms for my wonderful students where they were gonna talk about different, uh, it was not a party, even though the first topic is marijuana. No, no, no. So they were gonna talk about, should marijuana be legalized? Should we abolish the death penalty? Uh, is there, is the electoral college, which is a political process here, does that make sense? And you know, what is, what, what should happen for folks who have DACA, which is the deferred action uh, for children who've come here uh, uh, without documents, and then the dreamers who are related to DACA. So they, each one of, you know, we were able to put them into the groups and had them talk. When we do those breakout rooms, it's really important to have clearly defined roles for the students so that they know what's expected of them, because they may look at it and I know this has happened on occasion, maybe not in, well, even in my class, I will say yes, where someone says, oh, I think this means coffee break. <laughs> so they're gone. Um, where you want to make sure that they have a, um, you know, they know what their role is so that they can complete it. And then you also want to figure out what are the elements that are going to go into the assessment of what they're doing? What is it that you want from them and how are you going to measure it? And you also have to make sure that you still account for those glitches and computer issues that can come up. And then there's homework. Again, I think it's important to lower the stakes for homework. Um, and as I was mentioning before, you want to provide support so that they can get feedback right away. Because a lot of times what happens is, and I have also have, I have students who are working too. They work as well as trying to squeeze my classes in. I had one student who she would mute everything and she'd have it on her phone and she'd be at her desk in her office working and she'd be, don't tell anybody. But, you know, I mean, but she wanted to learn, but she had to work, you know. So sometimes if we can provide these ways for people to get that feedback automatically, then they can do it at any time they want. Uh, and and it can, they can actually not just do the task, but then get some feedback from, on it as well. And then for in-class work, I think it's great to use what you guys are using now, the chat room. Uh, yeah, yeah, you guys, you guys are doing nice work. And I will tell you, Canvas is great and it's free for teachers. So please consider it. You can use the chat room. You can use the polls. There are polls that are used uh, with Zoom. And there are other tools as well that you can use. Um, and here's an example of one of the things, and this is, connects to assessment, is that um, just in a warm up, when I tell them, that's me and my family, by the way, in front of the fire, it's cold up here in Atlanta. So I told them a little bit about what I did, and then they had to write in the chat room there using the grammatical structures that we are, we're working on. So, and I forget what it was. Oh, it's using the it construction. It was so beautiful. It was amazing, things like that. So they, everybody had to write something about what their weekend was. And then afterwards, during that, at that same time, I was able to give them feedback immediately, but then I could also go back because Zoom gives you the chat uh, log so you can see everything that's been written and you can either correct it or you can use it. Uh, oh, here, I'm talking about it now. The, the chat rooms, it lowers stress, I think, because then people don't have to talk. It also is logistically, as you guys see, you know, I mean, I love it if you guys want to unmute and say hello, unless there's a dog in the room. Well, even if there's a dog, we like dogs. Um, but, uh, you know, it, it can lower the stress because, it, you know, you don't have to worry about pronunciation, especially I was working with a writing class, so. Um, and you can review what's going on right then. So, and especially if you can create an atmosphere with your students where they realize you're not attacking them or you're not, you know, you know, putting them down, 
because the reality is everything that students do that's a mistake, everyone else is making it too. And so you can put it in terms that will make it very positive for people. So you can have a review of it. You can discuss it right then with each other. Uh, this is some of the while constructions. Um, and then, as I mentioned, you can review it later, either for assessment to give them a little grade or to do planning for what you need to do next in your class. And then the polls allow students a little bit of autonomy um, and gives them a little bit more engagement, which I think is nice. And there are other things too. This is the, the polling system that comes with Zoom, but there are a lot of other ones that you can use. And the other thing is you need to create rubrics. Isel and I know rubrics. We gotta, you wanna make them transparent and clear and as much as you can let students know what you're expecting of them. Because it's much harder in this online environment to sort of come up to the teacher after class and just get a little clarification because it's such a bigger deal to have to stay and do a video with somebody. Um, and I think it's important that we make assessment part of learning so that it's, it's a reiterate, an iterative sort of a thing that the learning continues and you wanna keep it relevant. Here's an accounting book that we use to, to create some vocabulary because we had a lot of accounting students. You wanna keep it uh, engaging and, and, uh, and important to your students. And here is, this is a, a this actually is an incredible uh, Mexican artist here in Atlanta who did a beautiful mural of different uh, Latinx uh, uh, figures here in Atlanta. And you know we're able to connect those things and people can write about that and it matters to them. And then that final image down below is from the Martin Luther King uh, Historical Center uh, where one of his famous quotes that, uh, you know, about human rights. And so you wanna make it so that the, you're able to engage the students and they see things that are relevant to their lives when they're working. And I think that may be it. Yeah, okay, that's it. That's what I got. I have one more thing, but I'm not gonna give it to you. Go ahead. Would you like to say something, John? No, I'm good. Oh, okay. If anybody has any questions, I have one more thing I'm gonna show you, but it'll be at the very end. All right, okay. So now it's time for questions. If you, if you have questions or would you like to say something? Yeah, they don't have to be questions. They can be comments. Comments. Have a little talk with John. Hello, Mr. Bunting. Hello, how are you? How are I'm you very good. Frangeli? Uh, Frangeli. Frangeli is fine. Hey. Uh, first, I would like to say that I'm, I'm really surprised how, like, that I can tell that all these assessments are, like, really student-based. And I really appreciate it because, like, if this is my first time, um, uh, seeing you and I'm um, honestly like I wish you were my teacher like I'm really fascinated by your point of view on students and it's it's been really like it's not really usually that we use uh, well that I've experienced a lot of like student centered uh, assessments at least in my school like because like some teachers uh, they still don't understand how it, how difficult it could be for other students like regardless like the connections and the internet and uh, well yeah and i'm really i really i really like how you how it shows that you care a lot about your students and i really appreciate it like like i said i really wish you were my teacher as well <laughs> thank you so much that's very sweet i mean you know i i will say in defense of all teachers everywhere it's a hard job you know um and, so, and sometimes it's not always easy that for teachers, especially as we have to sort of move away from things that we're used to, to embrace the, it's a great phrase, to embrace the ambiguity, you know, but I think it is important that we have to make sure students, we give students ownership, you know, because the students are the ones who are really gonna be doing the learning and, and I, I think it's really important that that you own that, that that's yours and that we're facilitating, we're helping, we can give guidance, but it's um, 
it's really your journey, you know? So thank you for your kind words. Thank you for your okay. time and your presentation, teacher. <laughs> Somebody else would like to have any comment to say in teacher? Janem, huh? Okay, um, hi. Um, I don't really have any questions because everything was really clear. And I just wanted to say that I really enjoyed this presentation. Uh, I like everything you talk about. I think it's really important, especially in a time like this, um, because, uh, well, personally, it has been hard for me adapting to this new um, well, style of learning. And I don't know, that was, it was really motivating uh, listening to you. So thank you. Thank you very much. Well, thank you. And yeah, Janem? Yes. Janem? Yeah, because it is, it's hard. I mean, and, and I think one of the things for those of you who are students, you need to give yourselves a pat on the back because this is not easy. There's so much uncertainty and you're being thrown in this new environment trying to learn. You know, it's, it's really hard. And I will say, I mean, my son is 19 and he's in, he's at school now. He's studying engineering and he's, I mean, it's, it's hard and we have to, and that's why I think it's so important for teachers to be aware that we can shift that view, that paradigm, you know, we can make that shift and say, you know what, this sort of rigid approach that we may have had before that was working. We just have to loosen it up a little bit and we still have to be we want people to learn and we want to make sure that you learn but there are ways that we can do this that can be i think kind because we're all we're all struggling so thank you for i mean you should feel good that you're doing this because it's not easy thank you teacher somebody else would like to say something <laughs> make some comments teacher i think there's a question in the chat ah, wait oh yes oh yeah from martha martha martha, martha. martha. how do you keep students engaged at the at these difficult times john well i i, I have to tell you my thought is that it is it's something that we need to um we need to take one, one uh, instance at a time. We have to stay very aware that everyone's circumstance is different. Um, and I will give you an example. We have, a, we have a pretty strict policy in our program that you can't have late final exams and you can't have early final exams. But one of my students who is from Korea got smacked down because two people in her family died suddenly in Korea, you know? And one of the things that we need to do is first and foremost is remember we're all just people, you know? And so as much as I love exams and giving people exams, we have to, you know, we just have to step back from that and put everything in a perspective. And I think students really understand that and appreciate that, that if you can keep that perspective while still, I mean, it doesn't mean then you say, oh, you don't have to study, but you, you have to, you can acknowledge that that struggle is real and that we're gonna get through this and not just get through it, but you're gonna be a, for example, you're gonna be a better writer or a better presenter by the time we finish this. And if we have to take some weird little detours that's okay. And I think everybody appreciates that, you know? And I think as for teachers, we need to make sure that we, we figure out the way that it best works for our personalities to be able to do that without feeling like we're either losing control, you know, cause it, it, it can be a really hard thing. Um, and I do think the other thing, and maybe now I will share the thing, the last thing that I have with you, because I do think one way to keep students engaged is to give them a little humor. It's language humor, so. Did is you your, guys read that? Your personality, John. <laughs> could, could you read that out loud, Isela? 
Yes, is your personality. No, but what can uh, you do my little box? For Christmas? Yeah. To do for Christmas. Forget the past. You can't change it. Definitely. Forget the present. I didn't get you one. Mm, interesting. <laughs> oh, sorry, no presents. <laughs> no presents. No it's presents. Christmas time, so I figured I would oh, want to do that. Sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> so, but I, I, I mean, part of it is, you know, so to go back to uh, the question is engaging is showing, you know, rigor, like, Mm -hmm. You, you want to show them, you know what, what they need in order to get better, but you also have to show compassion and you also have to show humor, I think, at least for me, but, um, or something, you have to show your human side. It doesn't necessarily have to be humor, you know, but it has to be that, yeah, we're all, we're all in this. Oh, and I see some. Marta, Marta says, uh, maybe a good grade could be a... <laughs> A good present, Marta. Yeah. <laughs> a good grade. Always good. Yeah. <laughs> um, Elisa says you can change it, but you can learn from it. Sure, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay. Well, no more questions there. I love your presentations. Well, uh, most of us, I think, we feel very happy and. I really appreciate this moment, Jan. Uh -huh. Thank you for sharing your knowledge. We have um, we have a lot of we have a lot to learn from you, not only about your academic strategies but a human sense. Your students are so lucky to have you to have you as their teacher. I think yeah. Uh, it's because I don't. I no, it's okay. One of the things too. Green is not very good here. One of the things that I also you have to realize, and I think we all know this because people use texting. Mm -hmm. Texting and typos. Don't worry about it. You know, because <laughs> those happen. No. You no, know, I'm not going to worry. But we yeah. are. We're learning from. Yeah. We're learning from our students, and well, I like the way they write sometimes. Yeah. At the chat room. Yeah, well, and I have to say, I mean, it is, it's, it's, it, it, these are the times I think where we all have to sort of pull together mm -hmm. and, and it, any way that we can do that, I think that's, that's really good. Yeah. And I have to say, thank you, Martha, I, for keeping your, those barking dogs <laughs> out. <laughs> uh, well, if you don't have more questions or no more comments. I would like to say thank you, John, again, and hope we well hope that you can come very soon to Mexico. You right. love Tijuana, you love Tecate, so and Mexicali oh, and Mexicali. Well, but here is very hot and very cold sometimes. And Ensenada. And Ensenada, yes. So hope we can have you here very soon. Well, Thank you very much for sharing with us everything that is uh, your passion, everything that is yours, assessment and evaluation. <laughs> well, it's my pleasure. And I have put my email on here. Actually, I'm going to pop it in here, too, just so you have it, because if, if you have any questions. Oh, thank you. Mm -hmm. Feel free, guys. OK. Um, yes, and probably we can visit Georgia. We can visit Atlanta. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Yes. When we're also we're doing a lot of online classes. So if if there are teachers or teachers in training, future teachers or present teachers, and you want to just stop in and take a look at a class or anything like that, just let me know. OK, because that's well, one of the beauties of Zoom is you can actually stop in. Without uh, do you have any program? Well, some programs where we can improve or English level skills or well, we have we have online programs. We actually, uh, I've had, uh, we we started a. Uh, we have our more our intensive English program, but we also have a second English for academic purposes program. Oh, okay. That's um, it. We actually had students from Mexico last semester. Okay. Living in Mexico, who who took the class. 
So probably our next topic or our next talk can be about that. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> that you can share with us uh, some information where we can study abroad, where we can study online and improve our English skills. Absolutely. I would love that. Uh, thank you very much, John. Thank you, everyone who is here. Thank you guys. Wear thank a mask. Be uh, safe. Be safe. Bye. <laughs> thank you, John. David Toledo is there. Uh -huh. I think he is. Bye, My Jack. Uh, <laughs> uh, esta presentación está um, grabada. Sí, no, nos va a mandar John Banting la grabación. Sí, yo voy okay. a ponerla en, en YouTube para... Ah, sí, habla español. <laughs> en una forma. Okay. <laughs> Muchas gracias. De nada. De nada. A la orden. A la orden. Y feliz Navidad. Ah, great. Igualmente, gracias. So we can teach you Spanish, John. Por favor, sí. Ajá. Uh -huh. <laughs> bueno. Thank you. Merry Bye. Christmas. Merry Christmas.